It is not the name of Brooks which makes the saddle good, but the saddle and its excellence which makes the name supreme. Leather, metal, and over a century of experience. At the world's oldest manufacturer, we're going to discover the secrets of how a leather saddle became a cult item and an icon of cycling. We're in Smethwick, in the suburbs of Birmingham in the West Midlands, close to where the business started in 1866. We asked Stephen Green what is known about Mr. Brooks, the founder of what used to be the largest saddle manufacturing company in the world till the 1950s. We recently received a letter from Mr. Brian Yates, the great-grandson of Mr. J.B. Brooks. And in this letter, um, he explains the true history of the company. In 1866, um, J.B. Brooks moved from a small town in Leicestershire called Hinkley into Birmingham to set up a, a general leather trading company under the name J.B. Brooks & Co. The company was doing steady progress in these initial years, but in 1878 something happened that changed all of this. J.B. Brooks um, rode back and forth from his business on horseback, and in this year his horse died. He decided at the time he couldn't afford to buy a new horse, um, so instead a friend of his lent him a bicycle. This was the first experience he had of cycling, and he found the, sa the saddle on this seat so uncomfortable that he vowed from that day forward to, to do something about it. And the rest, as we say, is history. Since the first patent on saddles was filed in 1882, many more have followed. But as early as the 1890s, the product was almost identical to today's saddle. Having already been featured in the late 1890s catalogues, the B17 is the oldest model in the current range. A total of about 20 models available in different finishes have lasted over the decades and are still manufactured as they've always been. When I first uh, joined the company 13 years ago, I took a walk around the factory and I thought, I've got to drag this company into the 20th century, let alone the 21st. But I realised after a few weeks that the traditional methods that we employ uh, are just right for Brooks and very little has changed. Since we first began to make cycle saddles, our aim has been the best of everything. The best materials, the best designs, the best constructions that experience, skill and money can procure. Brooks saddles are still made exclusively of leather and metal. Big rolls of wire and strips of metal are shaped to make the different components of the structure. Metal parts in steel and titanium are in fact still fabricated in-house. Left springs are coming out of a 1954 German machine. Right springs are coming out of a 1949 British machine. A dozen other machines and presses cut, stamp, bend and shape all the other parts of the saddle frames in the Brooks time-honored fashion. Welding is only needed on saddles with single rails and no suspension. Sprung saddles require more complex metal structures with up to 20 components which are all assembled by hand. For brook saddles, only the butt of a hide is employed. This is only the middle portion of the whole hide and commands a much higher price. It is only by the use of such material, however, that the quality of brook saddles can be maintained. Well, the leather we use needs to be five millimeters thick. The cattle come from the UK. There are only two tanneries in Europe uh, that are able to provide us with the finish we require. We would expect to get 10 tops uh, out of one bend of leather. The back area of the leather, which is, tends to be stiffer, uh, we would use for the racing saddles. And the belly area, which tends to be softer, we'd use for other models. Very little of the leather is wasted because we would also cut out uh, the mud flaps and the washers for the uh, handlebar grips, uh, so hardly any is lost. It takes about three days to make a Brooks saddle. Leather tops are put in to soak. These stay in the water for one hour, then they drip dry for a while. 
The first molding process happens while they are still damp. The definitive shape is given by a press, but skillful hands complete the process. In order to retain the shape, the leather needs to be dried slowly and carefully. This takes place in two different ovens, where the tops remain for a couple of hours at varying temperatures. As you can see, this, it's an old age tradition, this is a Brooks's. Like, you know, the trademark on every saddle we make, it's trademarked on each side, and also the nameplate on the back. It's an old age tradition. It's been going on for years and years and years. And I presume it will always be the same. It's the way it goes. Warning, it is as well to be assured that the saddle you buy as a Brooks bears the name Brooks on the flaps and at the rear it may save you considerable disappointment. Tops for the sports models are given a final touch with a chamfering knife. A mistake at this stage could ruin the top and make it useless. For this reason, this operation, called chamfering, is extremely critical. It takes a bit of getting into, like, you know, after, after a while you get into it and it's... It can be difficult sometimes, you get a bit of... Like, the leather does change. Like, you know, you'll get a bit of nice, soft leather and then other times you get a bit of hard leather and it's... Indeed. The manufacture of Brooks saddles is in the hands of those who possess an unequalled experience in their work. Once all the work on the leather top is completed, it's ready to be attached to the back plate of the metal structure. This process is relatively simple with so-called tubular rivets. However, it takes great skill and effort to do it with solid copper rivets used on the top of the range models. One slip of the hammer and the saddle is ruined. Not only that, each rivet must be pleasing to the eye. The last step is to connect the leather top and the metal structure at the front. The nose area of uh, Brooks Saddle is a vital area uh, because of the tension pin arrangement that we have at the front here. Uh, if you imagine the saddle to be like a hammock with the leather suspended on the metal frame, after a while of you've being used, the saddle begins to fit the person who's riding the bike perfectly, as in this case here. However, after a while, it'll be necessary to tension the saddle with this tensioning spanner if you tension it around 90 degrees, then it should return to its original tension. Brooks is certainly known for its leather saddles, but the genius of John Boltby and his son Boltby Brooks invented and manufactured many other products for cycling, motorcycling, traveling in general, and much, much more. We delved into the old patent books and catalogues and found designs for satchels, knapsacks, golf bags, tea and picnic cases, tools, cycling clothes, shoes, car trunks, and even for a punch ball. Craftsmanship, attention to detail, and authenticity are imperatives of Brooks when designing new products or reintroducing old ones. The oldest, which has recently been relaunched, is the Challenge tool bag, patented in 1896. The newest is the leather grip, newly designed but totally respecting the Brooks heritage, leather, metal and an ingenious idea to assemble the parts. <laughs> Brooks saddles have a worldwide reputation and in every country are acknowledged to stand preeminent and neither pains nor expense will be spared to retain this enviable position.
The world has radically changed since John Boltby Brooks first rode a bicycle in 1878. So bicycles have changed, and the way we use them. Brooks saddles, though, have lived on across generations. In London, we interviewed Grant and Monty Young, who own Condor Cycles, one of the oldest bicycle shops and finest bicycle frame builders in England. Going back at least, say, 30 or 40 years, finest saddle you could use was a Brooks saddle. Uh, we had uh, many teams riding Brooks saddles, such as uh, the Condor Mackerson team, who rode the Tour de France. And also we had Eddie Merckx and Tom Simpson used to ride a saddle, and also Fausto Coppi. The funniest thing was that uh, when they changed their bicycles after one season, they kept the saddle. The saddle came from the old uh, bicycle to the new bicycle, and uh, they never wore out. I think, the, uh, I think the rider wore out before the saddle. People are, are using Brooks saddles uh, once again for, for two reasons. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a fashion. People love the retro look of bicycles and obviously Brooks saddles that go with that, that bicycle. Uh, but they're also realising that they can buy that saddle and it will mould to their shape, unlike a traditional modern style saddle that you know you buy and you have to you have to say to, to a customer well this is great this shape works and it's good for you it may not work for you whereas a, a brook saddle you know after a few weeks it will mold to them and should be very very comfortable <laughs> <laughs>